For a little while now, I've thought about revisiting a project that I started a couple of years ago. A little, yeah, about a couple of years ago, actually, probably to about this day, this uh, weekend. And I continued with it until late into the fall. Uh, according to this, November 17th was the last time that I posted, November 17th of the year 2019, and then went on hiatus, started playing shootout hockey instead, and some other hockey games followed, and just never really found my way back to this one. And, uh, sorry, excuse me there for a moment while I have a quick sip of my beverage uh, and gather my thoughts. So... There are a variety of ways that I could do this. I'm still not entirely sure, but I've spent enough time now setting up and getting ready for this that I thought, okay, it's time to share this. This is quite heavily inspired, even though this is something that I've thought about revisiting for a while. I will admit that this is quite heavily inspired by what I'll call the straw that broke the camel's back on it, which was uh, Dave Gardner's video uh, this morning. Well, this morning over here when I listened to it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't catch it live, but it's called, uh, hitting the pause button on a project. And in a sense, that's kind of what I did with this one for the better part of, uh, two years. And so what this is, this is paradise hockey. I thought that because these cards are so small, just to have them on this, uh, I guess I've got this zoomed in right now, but just to have it on this here plaid blanket, uh, the cards might not show up so well. So the prop that I'm actually using is, uh, the rink, the ice rink or whatever, the playing surface for one of my games in development, one of my incomplete uh, games. I just thought the cards might look kind of nice on it. So, And what I've done too, I've taken the teams and I've put them on uh, post-it notes. Uh, I did this, I did similar with the 63 uh, WHL set, which I've yet to use, but I uh, have them just off camera. I don't want to, might knock over a bunch of other things if I reach for them. Uh, so I won't do that at this moment, but I have the forward lines here. So uh, like this and then defense pairs. And I put just to sort of make the defense pairs show up a little more easily from the forward lines. I have uh, this uh, card turned over in the middle. These are players that won't be used in the game, so it won't matter. I think Phil Esposito is one of them. He played for Chicago then and not Boston. As to John McKenzie, so I think John McKenzie is the other pie McKenzie. He was a pretty good player then, even for Chicago, even though John McKenzie is more well-known in Boston uh, from, from a few years beyond this. This... Uh, this is 1963. This is December 19, December 18th, rather, 1963. And this game is Paradise Hockey. This is a project that I started. This is the first project that I that I started with any hockey game. Technically, the first hockey game that I would have played after a couple of decades away from this hobby, from tabletop hockey. And so I thought, I don't know, I just today I thought it would be really appropriate to try to revisit this. I may make some mistakes as I'm playing the game. I'm going to go over a couple of modifications that I have for the game as well. And this could end up being a pretty long video, but, you know, it, it, if it has to be a long video, it has to be a long video. It is what it is. So there's a few things that I want to uh, get through and go through here. But for the lines, to be honest, this is going to be kind of multiple choice. I thought I could, I could do something like this and have them all showing. Uh, like that, and then the two defense pairs and the goalies, or I could stack them on one on top of the other. I think so there's less hand movement. I think what I will do is uh, do what I said there at first, and that is uh, just um, have them like this for the time being. I think that'll be a little easier as well for odd man situations, power play, penalty kill, things like that. Anyway, I'll straighten that up in a moment. So these are my defense pairs. Uh, goalie Glenn Hall, even if he gets hurt, he'll have to just go and get stitched up and come back into the game. And uh, as goodness is watching there, the 59, game 7, 1959. 59? I think. I want to say 59. Toronto and Boston, game 7. Harry Lumley of Boston. He, uh, he broke a real tooth. He broke a false tooth. He left the game for half an hour. They interviewed Gordie Howe. They interviewed... Uh, a who's who of hockey. Uh, I've checked that out a couple of times now. That's, uh, it's, uh, it was a lot of fun, that era. It really was. Um, there's some good, some good old hockey on YouTube, thankfully. Uh, so, anyway, if I can get all those old games, uh, archived, that, uh, that, what am I trying to say here? I think that makes an NHL Center Ice uh, subscription 
more worth it than anything else you know never mind the current stuff if you can go back and uh you know watch games even before there was a clock or anything like that so i i mentioned this before in other videos but i once you watch black and white 1960s hockey and there's no clock you don't know the running time unless it's announced uh you just really kind of disappear into the world of ice hockey professional ice hockey it's a lot of fun actually something that i think they ought to revisit although i do have to say i like the uh, the bali um bali sports now they're doing some i don't know with the espn takeover actually if they will not quite sure how that works who will continue showing the games i also made a mental note that i want to switch out boyvin and tom johnson here before i get going I think uh, Boyvin probably would have played with Ted Green, and then Johnson would have stepped back and played with uh, Bob McCord. This is as played-ish. I don't know the exact lineups. I've looked at the box scores. I have the game. Um, how am I going to? Maybe I need to zoom out a little bit. So I have the game. Whoops, that's I always go the wrong way with that. So I have the game here. I have Boston's numbers. There's statistics from 64. And uh, in the game, Boston actually won this game 2-1. Uh, and uh, I should be able to go back or forward and find it. Let's see here. Uh, well, that's the schedule, so that, that's useful. So if I... Nope, that's March. That's not what I'm looking for. This is 64. Sorry about this. Bear with me here for a moment. Here it is, December 18th. Yes, this one. So in this game here, uh, the Bruins, as you can see there, they ended up winning by a final score of 2-1. Not sure if you can see that too well. Maybe I can zoom in there. So, uh, penalties there, Kurtenbach Westfall. He played defense, actually, for Boston that season, did Ed Westfall. So he's there as well. Uh, Topazini, I found out from that 59 game. I was pronouncing it Topazini, but it's Topazini. I may pronounce some of these players' names incorrectly. This is from, you know, almost 20 years before I was even born. So... Uh, as fond as I am of the air, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert who knows exactly how to say every one of their names or anything like that. Anyway, so and this is the box score right there. So I used the box score actually to come up with a rough, like a loose lineup, like Busick, Tommy Williams, and Murray Oliver. I was using them as Boston's top line in Paradise Games anyway. Makita with Mackie and Warren, but it wasn't the power play. I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm going to use Mackie in a power play situation. I have Makita and Hall in separate lines. I think that is what was done. Uh, pretty commonly then the Chicago one at the pack a double punch so they had Hall on line two and then also Hall sometimes would go Makita probably also and take a shift with a couple of other forwards that didn't get as much ice time which I've sort of accounted for in this as well but just a quick look as well at uh, so some of the things that kind of I guess caused me to burn out with this project somewhat shamefully I will say that as a Habs fan it didn't help that Montreal, they're sort of just hanging on to a playoff spot. They finished first overall in the season. Montreal and Chicago were kind of neck and neck. Chicago is replicating history pretty well. The Habs are struggling. Um, another thing that I did for this as well, I uh, any injuries? Because again, it's been about two years now since I last played this. I thought just as I was getting the coffee ready just before starting, I thought that I might say something about how the players have had long enough to recuperate now. It has been about two years. And as you see there, the scoring race, somewhat uninspiring. I mean, nobody had 100 points in the season or anything like that. Scoring was a little lower than if you were above a point per game. You know, it was pretty good. You were a scoring superstar. This wasn't yet 80s hockey, not even 70s hockey. But Bobby Hall sitting there with 28 points in 29 games at the top of the scoring race. Camille Henry, a bit of an aberration there. Camille, the uh, eel for New York with 28 points in just 23 games. He was injured for a handful of games. Again, that's where I have a problem with as played is because as I'm playing it, I could have a player get injured in the game. And so then how do you continue with an as played if somebody like, do you ignore your own injury in your own game? So I go back and forth with as played. But anyway, that's the scoring race. And these were the leaders in different categories at the time. I'd since long forgotten this. Nobody has any more than a couple of shorthanded goals. Though McKenzie, I guess, has played well enough for Chicago that he's had a couple of them. I guess I've had him out there in the penalty kill. Makita leading in shots on goal and penalty minutes. Actually, that was a little surprise for Makita circa 63-64. Points by defenseman Harry Howell. Pretty good. 21 points in 29 games for defenseman then. Uh, Pre-Bobby Orr, defensemen just weren't as purely offensive. And this was, of course, a, a year, I want to say. Maybe a couple before Orr came along. Anyway. 
before or as a rookie season. Bauer save percentage and goals against average reminds me now that's probably a little higher than Johnson Hall and Hodgeech with four shutouts. So another thing I guess, and I actually played with some of the little rules and house rules for Paradise as I was doing this project because one of the things that I found was just that scoring was too low. So uh, like low relative to what it would have been historically and just kind of, again, I, I mean, I want to do this replay, but I want these games to be just exciting enough and have just enough in them to really make me want to keep playing them. So I took the spectacular save out for a little while this year, third dice, the decider die here, the spectacular save. I've decided what I'm going to do with it. And actually one other thing, I might even pause to uh, write it down. Okay, so some small changes here, and I keep going back and forth on how to lay these out. Of course, tucked in behind here, I have the envelopes that these were originally in. I think I showed at the beginning of the video with the uh, the paper clips. And sorry if I came into this at a different rate. I have actually been off camera for several minutes figuring out how exactly I was going to word this. And it's a bit cruddy looking. Sorry about that. I put this part together in a hurry. But basically, so for goalies... Um, cause again, I want to increase scoring kind of, or I'd like to, I'd like to see scoring be a little higher. And also I want to distinguish good goalies from not so good ones. So what I'm going to do, and probably I'm going to confuse myself a little bit, actually, that's one of the things I'm going to do. And I'm going to forget this sometimes. I'm going to make some mistakes. This is experimental, but if the goalie is a minus one, I don't think there are minus twos in the season set. I think in some other seasons there are minus two goalies in paradise, but yeah, Hall is a minus one, Johnson is even. So for Johnson, there will be no change in the blue. Basically, when it's against Johnson, I don't even really have to roll this uh, this uh, die here. If it's a minus one goalie, Glenn Hall will get a spectacular save on a blue six. If it's a plus one goalie, which doesn't apply in this game, but there are one or two, it's going to be a bad goal on a six. So even if the player shoots and it's not, you know, even a good shot, yeah, I might modify that. So if it's it has to be maybe close to good. If it's if it's a terrible shot, if you roll like a combined I don't know nine or higher, then maybe that that doesn't apply. Uh, for the skaters, this is the one that I'm pretty much guaranteed to screw up. You know, sometimes uh, if the defense rating is three or gra greater. Uh, so let's say the player's offense rating is a one and the defense is a four, five, or a six. Reversal on a six only. I use this for skaters in play for the reversal die. However, if the defense is two or less, so if you have, say, a three up against a four, or even a three up against a five, reversal on a five or a six, the offense can still manage to, to do something with it if the blue die is either a five or a six. I think this is a little more realistic. I think that players who are a little better, but not, you know, not... Mm, what's the word I'm looking for here? They don't just tower over the opposition talent-wise. I think that 60% of, or two-thirds of the time, 66% of the time, it seems a little more realistic to me. The timing will be a six or six. I, I've prepared this here uh, <laughs> earlier. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to remember for every ice action to move this pawn. And so what six or six means is six ice actions or uh, a white six, which is traditionally how you would advance two minutes and change lines in paradise anyway. So whichever comes first, if there if there's a white six, I'll assume it's a lull for about a minute, minute and a half, maybe a little more, a little less, and then I will change lines for it. I've not played this game in a while. You know, it's not it's not like me to, and I thought a lot about doing that. I thought a lot about just playing at least a period or two off camera, and probably I should have. And just get ready for this. Paradise is a pretty easy game. This is what the rink looks like originally. And this does make some things easier. You know, for instance, basically you can go 1, 2, 3, 4, four uh, uh, sorry, here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you know, the left wing is 1, right wing is a 2, center is a 3, left defense is a 4, right defense is a 5. I'm going to have to try to remember that during the game and not do what I did in another video that I have in this channel where I try to play Paradise Hockey. And I'm pretty tired in that one, more tired in that one than I am in this one. Uh, and I accidentally started playing I Play Hockey, which is another of my games in development, which has no relation to this game right here. So anyway, um, I'm going to put this chart a little off camera, but somewhere where I can view it easily. 
And uh, well, you know what? That's that's not as fun. It's a colorful chart, damn it. People who are curious about paradise might want to actually see that chart. So uh, I can put these envelopes aside. Basically, I just have extra players. Players that would be used very little are in these envelopes, these team envelopes here. And I should probably put the paper clips in there as well for each one so I don't lose them. And then uh, I have players upside down, I guess, or just turned over who could figure into the game, though they won't into this one. But I mean, in a future one, again, I was talking about Pi McKenzie there for Chicago. So I don't know, between the score sheet, which would also be nice to have on camera, uh, this is maybe a little more practical. Maybe I will have to, and you can look at it one more time. It's colorful. It's pretty. It's nice. Uh, I'm going to keep this maybe right here where is it easier for me to see now i guess this is the problem when you buy design try to do this compact desktop type setup thing going on what i would be wise to have over here actually are the instructions and just a verbal reminder to myself right now because again i get confused the other hockey games the center might be a two instead of a three center here is a three right wing is a two left wing is a one left defense is a four right defense is a five uh Grab the blue marker, which of course conveniently I left over in the other side of the room when I went went to make some changes. And I think I'm good to go. Other than that, I think I just need a puck and a few. I've decided I'll get a few of the smaller ponds. I've got some smaller ponds here for uh we'll use yellow for Boston. I don't have red for Chicago. We'll go with purple. And uh so I can have oh wait, no, that's right. So I've decided against that for changing forwards and defense. So we'll see. Could be for penalties or something. I'm not even entirely sure. So anyway, completely experimental setup. You're here on this journey with me if you're watching or listening at this point. And uh, let's get things going here. So first period, I've sort of on, on the sidelines here, I've decided roughly, not everybody, but roughly loosely who I might most likely want to have in the power play and or penalty kill for a couple of players. That is both. And uh, away we go. This score sheet that I'm using here originally, I mean, it is a paradise download. I use it for numerous other hockey games. So, Okay, let's see if I still remember how to do this. I have played a few games since then, since that near two-year-long hiatus, but uh, I'm going to be pretty rusty probably to kick things off. I'm not even sure if this is going to be double as a good dice map, but I'm about to find out. I only need to drop the two here for the face-off. Seems okay so far, so good. So it is uh, the color die, if it says here, even visitor, even home, one man, okay, no wait, one to three, that's right, one to three and then four to six. So if it's visitor, it's one to three, home, it's four to six. So the visitor is one to draw, it's going to go to the right wing here for Chicago. So grab the puck, why don't you, I don't know if this night will work very well, I might need something a little heavier, but yeah, Chicago's right wing, Cam Warham, let's, uh, we'll try that anyway, I'll have have another ready in case I need uh, I just don't want it to be too big and to cover the whole player card but I will I'll have a backup puck here on standby so anyway warm here with the first ice action here to get us going and I will have to use the reversal die as well so warm I'm looking to the white six actually so it looks like we are going to get a lull and you know this is a paradise sheet because you can actually use the timing for it so two minutes have transpired I like that I don't have to not that I loathe having to use a bigger clock or anything like that, but I like that I can do the uh, do the timing as I have an inopportune or an, perhaps a badly timed a sip there of my iced uh, beverage. Um, so Kim Warren with the puck, and I guess two minutes just have transpired, and so immediately what I'm going to do, I'm just going to Peter Miller it here, by which I mean I'm going to hand it from Kim Warren over to Chico Mackey here for the... Uh, forwards and let's get Andy Ben Norland Orland Kurtenbach. I hope I said his name correctly and Dean Prentice out there. Kurtenbach and Prentice actually combined on a goal in this one and we'll change defense as well though I might not change defense quite as frequently just because they would have had more ice time then and probably taken some longer shifts. Okay so it's going to be Chico Mackey here in the follow-up. Let's uh, shake him and drop him all three of them through there. So Mackey, I'm looking to for left defenseman here on Boston. That is Tom Johnson. Mackey here with the, the offensive three. Johnson with the defensive four. And this is not a uh, not a five or a six. So what that means now is that t Tom Johnson has the puck. One ice action done by. I think I can do that. I think I can. I think I can. Okay, so. Um, hmm, maybe I should zoom in a little more. Hmm, just kind of. You know, make it look, I don't know, so you're not just looking at the mess on the desk. Slide that over there, and this over here. Zamboni equivalent here. Okay, Zamboni on the fly. Anyway, so 
Uh, I'm going to use this actually as a weight as well. Keep that weight down. Ah, right. Okay, so Tom Johnson here with the puck. And so Johnson here. This will be the second ice action. I should actually do that first, perhaps. Uh, so Johnson's looking to five. Five is the... Uh, or sorry, to three. I hope I, I hope I looked at the three for the other one. Johnson's looking at Chicago Center. Chicago Center is now Bill Hay. Johnson has the greater offense, so I'm just going to allow the play to go through. Again, the problem when I was doing this previously was that there was um, not enough scoring in it. So uh, I'm obviously going to be pretty lenient on the offense here. I'm not going to do... Well, no, come to think of it, if the defense is a lot worse than the offense, I might allow for a miracle defense play. I haven't really, to be honest with you, I haven't really thought of the other side of this uh, equation. It, it should really work both ways. But again, I've experimented. I've changed rules throughout this project to this replay so far. It is what it is. Uh, so again, it is Johnson looking to three. Bill, hey, Johnson will be able to put it through. So to the defense, I looked at five. To the other defenseman here, uh, Bob McCord. And uh, that does mean that Bob McCord actually has a shot on goal here. Bob McCord of Boston with the first shot on goal of this game and uh the seven is obviously not mccord would need a two to score not really a goal score just kind of trying to put it on the net i guess looking for the rebound okay so defense gets the uh, rebound here because this five is higher than uh, glenn hall's rebound rating of three it's going to be defense two getting that rebound as well so it will go to uh right wing chico Mackey and uh away we go with their third ice action here Mackey back up the ice the, the other way with it and Mackey's looking to Boston center Kurtenbach with the three. Mackey is a three. This is a two. It is a tie. I will still go for the pass in this case. So it is going to be a pass uh, to uh, the other wing. So it's going to be across to Bobby Hall here. So at four here with the uh, five and the one. Hall is looking to the right defenseman on Boston, Bob McCord. Of course, Hall has the higher offense and that's not reversed. So Hall will play it to the other wing over to Chico Mackey for a shot on goal. Uh, Chicago's first here of the game as a reminder we are just over two minutes into it and so I don't know about you so far I'm liking this that's a pretty terrible shot on goal though with the six and the four and it's not a rebound uh it's the six and the six actually that I would have to stop play for the trying to think now the six and the, the rebound and the face no it's a face off if um after the shot wait the rebound oh the puck is frozen if it's if the white die is a six that's right so there's no face off here uh the defense will get the rebound it's going to defense four that is left defenseman Tom Johnson here and so Johnson here at the five, looking to the five one. And so Johnson, I'm looking to the right defenseman here in Chicago. Howie Young, Johnson is lower in the four. So Howie Young is actually taking the puck away here, turned over again. And we're going to get a line change after this ice action. I look to the left wing here, Dean Prentice for Boston. Um, that is correct. Again, I'm just I'm trying to jog my memory here and remind myself. So um, uh, and, and the one he can't reverse it, and so again his offense is less then uh, Dean Prentice here on Boston, and that was the sixth ice action. So again, let's Peter Miller it here. Let's say that uh, Doug Moans, who actually played both forward and defense, I decided I'd bolster Boston's forward uh, unit for this one. So let's get the change here. We'll get Doug Moans out there. We'll get to, we'll go back to Leo Boyvin and Ted Green here as well. Uh, Johnson's obviously going to... Johnson was actually the last goalie in history uh, to play all 70 games, every single minute of every single game, for uh for uh his team for boston nobody backed him up even for as much as a minute all season long all 70 games uh anyway i'm gonna gonna show all three forward lines and i have some players here i might have mentioned this earlier but i have some sort of extra guys here tucked beneath the goalie on each team reg fleming will have some ice time wayne hillman as well there for chicago odd erickson did not dress in the game but i just wanted a good even number i wanted to dress the same amount of guys for both teams so again this is as played ish so, um, Bob Leiter, Wayne Connolly, and Ed Westfall, who did take a penalty in the game. Uh, he also played defense there. He's listed as right wing. Probably played right wing in the minors. Would it have been Providence? Yes, from Providence in 64. Anyway, just a couple of shots on goal so far, and we are four minutes in. So, I like that. Sometimes this game would have would be a little heavy in shots on goal. So, I'm just going to give the puck to Doug Moans. We have changed lines, and Doug Moans here... Looking at the first, whoops, at the first ice action here. And and again, if I skipped it, if I moved a nice action when there should have been a shot, then so be it. Uh, and if there was a white six that I overlooked and I'm a little too now locked into this system, then, you know, whatever, whatevs. Uh, it's going to be uh, Doug Moans here with a six. That's possibly going to be a penalty, I think, and the player opposite the man with the puck if you roll the red six. So I got to look here into the... Uh, 
I think it's if the white die is lower than this. The opposite of Doug Moans here would be Flaw with his penalty rating there of a three. Um, let's do a live look up here. Penalties, penalties. If the white die is within the defensive player's penalty rating, so uh, green six and then the white die. Yeah, so it does look like we're going to get our game, the game's uh, first penalty here at about 420 to uh, Pierre Pilat. And uh, so for that, again, penalty kill, I'm going to go really loose. Actually, I have Vosco and Young lined up for the penalty kill. So I might just do that. I might just slide it like that a little bit so the Young is, is showing. And Nestorenko actually I wanted to have out there for the penalty kill, so that's kind of convenient. We will go back to Boston's top line of uh, Busick, Oliver, and Williams for their power play. And uh, Leo Boyvin and Ted Green. Mind you, if I'm playing this on my own and I'm not playing it for show, I can probably do it a little more quickly than, than I can here. I think I'm going to have Johnson and Boyvin out there, though, for power play defense. I don't think I'll go... Actually, no. Who am I kidding? Doug Moans. Doug Moans now, I think, will play on the point. That, that feels feasible and realistic to me, and he just got out there 20 seconds ago. Maybe Doug Moans and Leo Boyvin, something like that. So, again, I might not be doing it exactly as it would have been done then, but I'm, I'm, ha I'm having fun to be honest. So, uh, Palat with two minutes. Actually, I should roll. Come to think of it, I shouldn't just assume a two-minute penalty. I don't really care the specifics. If it's tripping, cross-checking, whatever, it's two for cheating on skating. You're tired. You're toward the end of the shift or you're about to do something, give up something really bad. And so human nature, you, you start moving your hands instead of your feet and suddenly you're gone to the box. Anyway, I'm going to, I guess let's just roll two dice and see what we get. And if it's something stupid, I might ignore it. Uh, 3 to 10 and then 2, 11 and 12 for a major penalty. No, minor penalty, 3 to 10. So hooking, I guess, if you want to know the specifics of it there. I think it's just 2 for hooking for Pilat. I might just, like Blue Zone and other games, every penalty is 2 minutes and who cares. Anyway, this could get interesting though because it could run into 20 seconds in the following segment. I think I still will do like the lull kill. <sighs> Haven't thought of that. I might not. Maybe maybe that's where I exclude the white six, and I just say it's a face-off. We'll say that. So I'm making some stuff up here on the fly. Anyway, off the draw, and because it's a one-man advantage, uh, it's going to go to five. It's going to go to Boston's right defenseman there. So the acting right defenseman in this case, I will say, is Doug Moens. And uh, Moens, they're the one, so I have to look to Chicago's left wing, Ron Murphy. The offense and the defense, 3-3, but that's a 5, so that's going to get through. Moans over to uh, the left wing here. Johnny Busick for a shot on goal here on the power play. Johnny Busick with a se oh dear, with a 7, but uh, he needs actually, what does he need to score? He needs a 4 to score, so no can do. And because that's a 6, I'm pretty darn sure that means a face-off. So that that's, feels realistic to me. We're now... 20 into the power play, 40 into the shift. Off the draw, it's going to be Boston's left wing here. Busick with it conveniently. So Busick here, I look to the 1-4. I look over to Ron Murphy. Busick here, 6. Murphy, 3. Busick, but it's a 5. So you know what? I am going to give it to the defense in this case. Again, me, this is where it gets complicated because maybe I should argue that shorthanded. You know what? I'm going to argue shorthanded. That doesn't matter. Remember what I said about a lack of scoring. So it's going to go to the other wing. Tom Williams this time. Four shot on goal on the power play, and I'm pretty sure that we're here. Williams with a 4. And Hall with the minus 1. So that is a goal. There we go on the power play. Busick, I think that was only his only one and only shot. Tom Williams here with the power play goal, putting Boston up 1-0. Uh, in real life, the three of them combined for a goal. I'm curious to check on that, actually, to see relative to real life. Because I know the three, well, I shouldn't say the three. I can't assume that Oliver will get the assist. I have to remind myself how to actually do assist in this damn game. But there you go. It is. It was Busick with, uh, from Williams and Oliver. It doesn't denote that it was on the power play, but that's how I knew to put this line together. So uh, in my case, it's Tommy Williams here with the power play marker, assisted by Busick. And you know what? Murray Oliver won the draw, so I'm not even going to figure out assist until the next goal. It is one nothing Boston, and I don't have my Uno cards, and I have things all... In a mess here. If you think it's messy with what little you can see on camera, you should see what it looks like if I if I zoom out and just sort of pan around the room. It is a disaster right now. Uh, it's going to be, okay, I'm exaggerating, but not by a whole lot. It's going to be Boston here up by, uh, up by a goal striking first, so I should actually give them that goal. Jeez, what is this? The Soviet Union in game six or seven or whatever of the 72 Summit Series where uh, Canada scored and they wouldn't. Uh, I think it was just the goal, the the horn, actually. They wouldn't sound it. 
after one of Canada's goals, uh, if I'm recalling correctly, which probably not entirely. So, so we have a one nothing hockey game here in the early going, about four, about five minutes into it, actually, about five minutes exactly into the game. Uh, so we're going to go back to five on five now. Now let's see, Chicago, here's where I might game it a little bit. Chicago's going to look for the quick goal, but uh, this line took a penalty. Let's throw Hall Hay and uh, Chico Mackey on there. With uh, let's get Vosco and Palat back out there as well. Again, these guys would have seen more ice time then, so I feel even more liberal doing it then than I would for now. When maybe as played with all the parity in the league and everything like that, four lines, three defense pairs, things you might have to watch, things like that a little more. So let's kind of throw out. Uh, should they do a victory lap skate? No, it's been a minute. Let's change them. Let's uh, let's keep our defensive unit actually up against them. So Moans is only out there for a skate. Let's get it. Uh, Shimon's have figured in on that goal. It doesn't matter. Okay, so it's going to be here. Uh, so you can see how arbitrarily I did that, whatever. it's. Uh, and I guess as well, I could say at five minutes. And what I could also do, sorry, let's roll a D20. Let's roll a D20. So I'm, I'm adding to this game here on the fly. So we'll say at 450, because that was a 10. At 450 in the power play goal, it was Williams from... And I'll do a little one nothing there as well. So no, it's one nothing Boston at this point. From Busick, I will award the primary. Obviously, Amory Oliver. There is a system to do assist in the game, somewhat abstract after a goal is scored. I still like to look at who in the game. And I know in 20 seconds, the puck could change hands a few times. But I still like, in this case especially, Busick handing it to Williams. Very logical, I would think. Uh, so here off the draw, I don't need to drop the blue for the draw, but it's going to be home, uh, visitor rather winning the face off in this case. So Bill Hay wins it. He has it himself in the aftermath here with the four, two. I looked at Boston's left defenseman, Leo Boyvin there with the four, Hay with the five, but that is a five. So I'm going to say Leo Boyvin has it. I think it's got to work both ways. And uh, so Boyvin, so we're four into the shift. Uh, six and the two, is there going to be another penalty here? This was another thing I didn't always like about Paradise. In this real game, it was somewhat tame. I think they're like relative to these, uh, relative to these, and what the heck, this is already a long ass video. So relative to, I mean, what do you have? Seven, 14 total penalty minutes in a game. I think that'd be pretty good for Chicago and Boston late in 63 with Christmas approaching. Not that Christmas would necessarily have anything to do with the, I'm not even quite sure why I said that with the penalty uh, situation. So Boyvin, and I was just assuming there, Boyvin, his direct opposition would be Chico Mackey, and Mackey's uh, penalty is a three there. So Mackey's in the box. You know what? This did plague Chicago, I think, in real life then. I mean, they were a good team, but I think penalties was sort of the bane of their, their whatever. So Mackey for two, I suppose. Not trying to roll myself into any turmoil, but Mackey, again, because his penalty rating is not super high, uh, I'm just going to say two minutes to Mackey. So two minutes to Mackey here at, uh, and I suppose I could have noted that as well. Two to, who got the first one there? Palat. And that would have been roughly about four minutes in, we'll say. I don't worry as much about exact. And I suppose here for the time, I could say, so 15 seconds, and then that's uh, 5.20. So not that long after. Uh, let's go 5.05, or 5.15, we'll say. It's uh, going to be Chico Mackey here getting the uh, two-minute uh, infraction, whatever, transgression. Here on December 18th, 1963, Boston, Chicago. Yes, we're going slow-mo. We're learning a game here again, uh, relearning it. So Boston's back to the power play. I didn't really think I'd need a second power play configuration, and what the heck. It's 1963. That might be my answer to a few different questions. Let's go Johnson Boyvin this time, though. Moans was out there again for a little, a little while uh, on the ensuing shift. And I guess we'll go back to Murray, Nestrenko, and Balfour here. Or, well, I should assume, maybe I should assume somebody's vacant. L Mackey's in the box. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I I'm just going to say maybe Balfour. So it's going to be Murphy and Nestrenko. That's probably who I have isolated here anyway. Nestrenko at least. And, uh, yeah, let's look at, actually, McNeil and Young have high defense. Though Young is at risk of taking a penalty himself. So let's get a face off here in the power play. And we are towards the end of this shift. Here with the five, that does mean actually with only one man short, they are going to win it to six, the center. So Chicago, Eric Nestorenko here looking to kill some time on the uh, penalty kill. 
Over to Boston's left wing, Johnny Busick here. His defense is a five, and that is a three. So he's lost the puck to Busick here. So uh, let's see here, 40 seconds now. So what I will do now, six minutes have gone by, and uh, 40 seconds in the uh, in the uh, odd man situation here. And Busick with a four and a three. I looked at left defense, Al McNeil. So the six over the five and the two. That does mean Busick gets it to three. Busick gets it to center, Murray Oliver. Here for a shot in the power play, and then we'll look to change lines. Uh, so it's going to be... Um, I don't know, for the power play, I might extend it. Anyway, that is a three, and Oliver, let's see. No, he would need a five, actually, to put that through. So Oliver with a shot here in the power play, not a good one. Shots on goal right now are 4-1 Boston. Again, Chicago has been playing shorthanded, but again, I like those. So far, so good for shots totals as well. With that, too, that does mean a rebound, though. A rebound, uh, yeah, right? The rebound. <sighs> Hold on. Rebound the color. Maybe it's the color for the rebound. Whoops. Yeah, it's if the color die is equal to or less than. Sorry if I did that incorrectly earlier in the frame. It will be uh, to the two, to the Boston, to Boston's left wing here, Johnny Busick. So, yeah, I'm going to leave them out there. And uh, the penalty kill as well. What the heck? Two minutes is two minutes, right? So... Up to the three, basically. I have to remember up to the three, and then it's transpired. It's expired. Uh, time has expired on the uh, five and four. It's going to be two, three here for Busick. Two, three. I look to uh, from the center positions vacant. He looks to Nestorenko here, the six and the four and the two. So Busick again, putting it to three, putting it again to Marie Oliver here for a shot in the power play. And I guess I should put that on one and not zero. So Oliver with a second here in the night, and the two and the two and the four, and Oliver six and. Down to five there, thanks to Glenn Hall. But that's a five or a six anyway. Anyway, that doesn't matter here. So uh, it is going to be yet another rebound. Back to the offense we go because that's a three, so it's lower than. So, um, and that's another thing too. I find too many rebounds in this game. I, I might change that. So if it's equivalent, equal to or greater than, there is no rebound for the offense. But with that said, Busick here with it. So another ice action here. Busick with a two and a four. Looking to Nestorenko again. Kind of the same process. The same old story. Except this time Busick gets it to goal scorer Tommy Williams. And Tommy Williams here. Williams will fire away with a six and the five. And so uh, that's a terrible freaking shot. And there's no rebound there at five. It will go to the defense. I will give Busick or Busick. Williams credit for the shot. And the puck's going to go to Howie Young here. So shots and goal are now 7-1 for Boston. I think that stays there. I think this is the final 20 seconds of the power play, though. Howie Young with the three and the four. I looked at Murray Oliver. Howie Young's defense is a two and a four. So here, two or less. Now my, my wrinkle is going to work its way into it. I will say that Howie Young will clear or at least get it to four. Who is four? Maybe what I should do is just allow a pass in this instant. But Howie Young is going to get it to the wing on the same side. That would be right wing. But that's do with that. No, I'll assume the center is vacant like other hockey games do. I'll say he gets it to Eric Nestorenko. And uh, we're going to go back to 5-5 five and five anyway. So we'll say Murray Balfour is out there as well. So maybe Nestorenko will hand it to Balfour. So here we go to... Now, wait a minute. That'd be six minutes up. This is where it does get a little complicated. No, we're seven and change into the game. That's right, because the penalty was taken at 5-15. So Nestorenko anyway, 2-3. So I look Tommy Williams with the one, Nestorenko with the three. Uh, he is higher offensively than is Williams defensively. Nestranko gets it to three, the man opposite the defensive player. That is Ron Murphy. Ron Murphy for Chicago, second shot on goal here of the game. And again, Johnstone is zero. So Johnston, it's spelled Johnstone there. It's Johnston. But Murphy there with the seven, that's not quite going to be a good shot for him. And the four, I looked at the five. That does mean actually that the defense will get the rebound. So it's going to go to two. Two is right wing Tommy Williams in this case. We'll look to do a line change here momentarily. Williams, I know he's a little tired, but again, it's 1963. Williams here with the five and the three and the right defenseman, Howie Young. Williams only a five himself, but the five. So again, here, the, the difference of one. Williams will put it through to uh, center. Murray Oliver here, his third shot of the night. Oliver's third shot of the night is a six. A six. That would score against a lesser goalie, but Glenn Hall is going to be able to beat that back. And no rebound on the play. It goes to Chicago's left wing here, Ron Murphy. And uh, I think we're up to five. I want to put us to five anyway, even if we aren't. <laughs> so um, it's going to be here, 5-5. Five, five. Murphy looking to Ted Green. Ted Green with a really good defense. And yeah, he would need a six in order to reverse it as per my rule, which I'm surprised I remembered. So the puck is going to Ted Green. And uh, I'm pretty sure does that put us to a seat? I just feel, I'm just feeling like lines need to be changed. And that we're at eight minutes here. We're eight minutes into the frame. Shots on goal here, three, five, six. 
Uh, seven two in favor of Boston and eight minutes in and let's get the Moose Fosco and Pierre Palat back out there. Let's go back to the Makita Warham line at McDonald's. Seems like it's been a while for them. I think Boston might counteract with I was gonna say their third line a more defensively sound one, but I mean Kurtenbach Prentice and Habent and no slouches defensively. Uh Boyvin and Ted Green, let's just, you know, to, okay, and Tom Johnson apparently is trying to escape the game. Uh, let's go Johnston and uh, Bob McCord there in the defense. And again, the goalie, I don't have to worry about it. So who had the freaking puck anyway? Uh, I think it was uh, some Boston's defense. Anyway, and it does matter actually here. This is on like inside the crease and some other games here. It does matter who it goes to. So a 2-2 here for McCord. I look to right wing Cam Warren. Bob McCord is a 1. That is a 4. He turns it over to Cam Warren. And that is the first 20 second segment. So we're now 820 into the frame and 40 dang minutes into this video. Uh, so up to the 8.40 mark now with uh, a 3-3 three, three and a 1 here. So Warm's looking to, and again, there will be no reversal. He looks to Makita. His offense is, what, to Makita? No, to Kurtenbach. But his offense is greater, so he gets it to center. Uh, his center, that's going to be Stan Makita with his first shot of the game. Makita, that's a 5 on the shot. Makita's scoring range is a 3 or a 6. So that is not good, but it's close. And 2, that's going to be a, a rebound, actually. The rebound will get back to left wing here at McDonald. And uh, some McDonald rolling. So now I would advance. We're nine minutes into it here. McDonald with the 3 3. His offense a 5. Looking at Curtain Box defense a 3. McDonald gets it to Makita again for a follow up shot here. Stan Makita this time with a 9. And again, the 6, it's going to be frozen. I'm not going to advance. Uh, but we're nine minutes into this one. And I don't know about anybody else. I don't know if this is the most watchable or the most listenable, but. You know, dare I sound like I'm kind of tooting my own here, patting myself on the shoulder or back or wherever, but I like this. Hmm. I like it, I do. I like it with these mods. So anyway, uh, Makita is... Uh, um, 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 sorry, what was I going to say there? Yes, yeah, so the puck has been frozen by Eddie Johnson, actually. We get, we'll get a face-off. We're nine minutes into it here, 4-1. That does mean home left wing here with it. I don't have to use this quite as much, so I should keep the cap on it. Uh, home left wing here with the puck, and that does mean, since Chicago's at home, it means they have McDonald here out with it for a try. McDonald here, I look to left wing Dean Prentice, and uh, four, five versus four and a three, so he's going to get the puck to five. Center, Stan Makita, again for a shot on goal. Makita here with his third of the night, and that's a seven. So in a lesser goalie, a plus one, that'd be a goal for Makita, but it's not. It's going to be frozen again. So they're trying to put the pressure here, trying to get that goal back. You can't see the zero because we're the Dice Towers position. Um, trying to get that goal back here immediately are the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I guess I could really... No, I can't do it right. I, I have logos, but they're back. You can see Chicago and Boston. I, I have, if I really wanted to immerse... You know what? What the heck? It's already... It's already a lengthy uh, video. Let me just to really go for immersion here. Let me grab the Chicago Blackhawks logo for my 67 hockey bones cards. Tuck that under there a little so it doesn't slide off. And I will counter with, um, I will counter with, uh, I will counter with, Boston, not really countering with, but for Boston here. Okay, how's that? Does that look okay? I like that. I like that. That should be all that matters. Okay, 43 minutes, damn it. Uh, so off the draw here, we're going to get a 6 and 5. That means it's going to be home with 5. Right defenseman here, home, so it's going to be Pierre Pilat here with the puck. And I feel like maybe we're at 920 now. Just because I know I'm forgetful when it comes to that, I'm going to jump it every once in a while anyway. So uh, the, it, consider it like a mini white six when I advance 20 seconds that perhaps I shouldn't. 2-5 uh, here for Palat. Looking to Andy Bent with the two. Palat has the higher, and this is a white two, so he's going to get a two. The other defenseman here, Moose Vosco, is going to tee, tee away, teeing away from a first. Vosco, first shot of the game for Chicago Blackhawks defenseman, and it's a terrible one. And the rebound as well. It's simply going to go to the defense here. Defensive left wing, Dean Prentice with it here. Up to the five now, Dean Prentice here. With the with the one, I'm looking to the left wing here on Chicago. Ab McDonald, Prentice, they are tied with the six. Prentice gets it through to five to the centerman. So it's going to be centerman, Orlin Kurtenbach here. His first shot of the night. Kurtenbach with a two and a six. So that's going to be frozen by Glenn Hall. And... Uh, 
I'm just going to change lines. I'm going to say that it's close enough here that we change lines. I'm going to say we're 10 minutes in. It feels like we're halfway through the period. Shots on goal here, five, six, seven, eight for Boston and three, six. See, those are a little high. So I don't, I don't feel too bad about jumping at 20 seconds. Uh, that being said, you can have shifts or at least pre-mod. You can have shifts where it's just turnover, 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 awaiting the white six and not getting it. Let's get Hall, Hay, and Mackey out there. And let's go with Bo uh, Boston's third line now. So uh, Doug Moans, Jerry Topazzini, as I was recently informed, and Forbes Kennedy. And uh, we go back to Boyvin and Ted Green. Yes. And maybe McNeil and Howie Young for that matter. Okay. So we'll get a face-off here and start a new shift. So off the draw this time. Hey, again, face-offs weren't kept then, so I don't mind, especially with 63, that it's just kind of a 50-50 for the face-off. It's going to be the visitor to the three. You could come off the mod for that. It's going to be the visitor with the three. That's going to be uh, my chest growling. <laughs> and uh, Forbes Kennedy here with the puck. Uh, so anyway, Kennedy here. So a little murmur there, and we're, we're uh, 20 seconds into it. With the six and the two there for Kennedy. That means it could be a penalty for... Oh, Bill Hay is only a one. Wow, they get off scot-free there. So Kennedy will, however, play it two. Right wing, Topazzini four. An automatic shot here. 20 seconds into the shift and Topazzini's shot. Uh, that's going to be frozen. And again, I, I'm pretty sure it's a puck frozen. And I don't think you advance two minutes for that. So Topazzini to a uh, Hall. And uh, yeah, I'm not... I'm just, I just changed the lines. I'm not in the mood. Anyway, here off the draw on the Chicago defensive end, maybe that's where you game it a little bit for a, a less than 50-50. It's going to be a 4-3 here. Makita was good in the draw. I know that from another game. So it's going to be a home with a 3, and that's going to be center. So Forbes Kennedy with the puck, and the and he's not home. What am I doing? It goes to Bill Hay instead. And Bill Hay here, 40 seconds into it now. Hey, we're going to get a lull. We're going to get a lull. So just as I say that, we're up to the 12-minute mark. So I like that if we get just enough lulls that, again, shots and stuff don't get ridiculous. Boston, I think it's time for them to come back with their top line and look to add to their lead. Tom Johnson as well, offensively pretty capable. It's weird seeing him as a Bruin. I know him from other stuff as a Montreal Canadian. And uh, let's go to Moose Fosco and Pierre Pilat. And, uh, and then we'll get Bobby, or uh, we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to Peter Miller it, is what we're going to do. Wait, five and six, so hey, I'll say he, uh, hey, I'm just going to say that he hands it off to, whoops, let's go Stan Makita. Let's go best on best here. Not really best on best because Bobby Hall's not out there, but uh, we'll say Makita has it. And uh, let's go back to the zero now, though we'll go 0 0.5. Roll our way up to the one here. So we're now 12-20 into a Makita with the 3-1. Looking at Murray Oliver, defensive four. But that is a six. So Murray Oliver's managed to take it away from Stan Makita. See, I like that. There's a little more variety. There's a little more flow. Stan Makita is not going to be able to maneuver the puck around Murray Oliver every damn time. I don't care what anybody says. Murray Oliver is a pretty good player in his own right. So Murray Oliver here with the puck now. We're up to 40 seconds here. Oliver with the 1-6. And there you go again. We're going to get a quick lull. So we're now 14 minutes into the period. And Oliver, I think what I will do... Uh, maybe I'll try to play this through here. The one, the defense, we'll see here. He'll hand it off if it's needed. But no, I think he would just get it to six. I think he would just get it to, um, oh, it's his man opposite the defensive player and the one, the left wing. So he'll get it to oncoming right wing Andy Abenton. We'll say that. That makes sense to me. And for Chicago, let's counter with uh, Nestranko Murray and Balfour here again. And uh, you know what? Let's, uh, I was, no, nah, yeah, let's leave the defense out there a little longer. Again, we're just playing around. So we're sandboxing it here. Andy Abenton, again, we're going to bring this down here, try not to bring the other magnets with it. And uh, McDonald here. So 3 1, there will be no reversal on this one. And look at that. <laughs> Another white six with the ice action. I'm going to assume that somebody else was out there and let these guys play for the next couple of minutes. Or maybe they took a one-minute shift and then they took some time off during the lull. They're back out there. Let's do this again. Let's not get a white six this time. So center Eric Nesterenko, defensive four. Habenton three. That's not reversed. That's going to go to Eric Nesterenko. And we advance 20 seconds. And uh, so up to the 40 now here, the ice action. I like to Dean Prentice, the defensive four, three. So that's going to go. So again, you can get some turnovers. Sometimes you get to the middle, bottom six of the lineup and you get stuff like this. So another minute goes by here. Now the six and the two. Could we have another penalty here? 
Immediately opposite Dean Prentice is Pierre Pilat. Pilat's going to the box for the second time this period. So, um, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be another two minute. Now, Boston did score on a power play earlier in this thing. So, and that's a nice even minute. I even kind of like that. So, we'll say we're 17 minutes in. That's what I'm going to do. What feels right? So, 17 in here, just roughly pull out back to the box for another pair. Two or less. He wasn't in the box for a full two the first time, but he is credited with a couple of penalty minutes there. Dean Prentice would be a pretty good one in the power play. He and Kurtenbach were involved in the offense in that game. But I think I have to go, what if this were real? And I'm going to go with, you know what, Boyvin and Tom Johnson. I want to customize the defense. You know what? We haven't seen Doug Bones in a while. Scratch that. I, I changed my mind. Even if he was on the ice, he wasn't involved in the play. I'm going to say Boyvin and Doug Bones. Plot is in the box. I'm going to go Vosco and Al McNeil just because Howie Young is a bit of a penalty risk. I don't care that McNeil would normally maybe play on the left side. I did go left hand, right hand. That's another thing that I looked at in hockey reference. And for that matter, you know what? Out for the kill. I'm going to really game this one. I'm going to say, hey, is vacant. This will be convenient for me. Let's go Hall and Chico Mackey. It's late in the damn period. Let's try to get the... Uh, so we get a 1-2 here. That's going to be visitor. No, it isn't because Boston's in the power play. It's going to be 2 with the one-man advantage and the 2 in the right wing. Still kind of figuring this out. Still jogging memory upstairs. Tommy freaking Williams with it. This is how I should have been playing it all along, guys and girls. It's going to be 2-1 here. Williams to Chico Mackey with the 3 defensively and the 1. No reversal. Williams will get it to the other wing. Johnny Busek here for a shot on goal here on the power play. With it. That's a 6 and that's a 1 down to a 5. So you know what? That's not a blue uh, 6. So that does mean that Johnny Busek has taken his turn scoring on the power play. Boston is up by a pair. So 2 nothing. There you go. That was relatively early. I think I forgot to do this. So that was, I'm going to say, at about 17.20. Let's get the exact time. 17.17. I like that, too. So it's 17.17 here in the power play. It is the Chief, as I've heard him uh, call. Johnny Busick here with uh, the power play goal. And it's now 2 nothing for the Boston Bruins. Yes, I will change the score eventually. I don't want to get blue marker on that card, though. Uh, Busick here, and it was from Williams, the direct pass. There's no way I don't award Williams, but... I should quit being scared of the fact that I've forgotten how, how else to award assist in this. Allow me to have a quick look here. Take a quick uh, peek at this. Uh, quick boo. It's going to be one, two, three. Wait, compare the assist rating of the two players indicated. Right, so you drop two dice. Here to start. And then I'm going to compare the assist rating here. So again, Williams already got the primary. So I'm going to look to two. No, wait, Williams with the primary already. Who is five? Five would be the right defense. The acting right defense in this play was Doug Moans. And his assist rating of the... Oh, of the two players indicated by the dice. What? Oh. So I'm comparing Williams against Moens. Well, that makes it easy for me because Williams already has an assist. So Moens here in the power play as well. That makes perfect sense to me that something like that would happen. So it's going to be 2-0 here for Boston. Late in period one. We're up to almost an hour in this one. Um, and a sip. I also think, too, a combination, once I get used to this, and when I'm not on camera, if I just shut up and go through this, 30 minutes? I'm going to guesstimate I could do a game in 30. <laughs> I've played 18 minutes of one period, but sure, I can do 60 in 30. Um, again, it's been a while. I have played a few games since this near two-year hiatus, but it has. I'm rusty. At least I haven't, um, I haven't gone into I play hockey by mistake yet. So it's going to be here. Wait, we're going to get a face off. I'm going to give them the victory lap. It was a short power play. That's what I call it when it when a team, when they leave the goal scorer in his line on the ice after a goal. I don't know if anybody else would call it that or not. I probably heard that from a play-by-play -play and or color commentator at some point in my hockey watching and listening life. Uh, so Makita is coming back now. And let's not put Forbes Kennedy on the blue line. Probably would be not all that bad of a blue line or might have even done it, you know, maybe at the Bantam level or something. But uh, let's go with uh, so this is a little messy, you know, I gotta be honest here. This is maybe this is a bit slippery for it, but I like that this doubles is kind of a like a pad for the this is good to know, you know, I might start doing this for other games too. I like it. Um, so whoops, so the one two, I do take that face off. That does mean visitor right wing, I'm pretty sure anyway. So Tommy Williams here with the puck. And uh, 
So it's going to be a 1-1 with the 6. So McDonald, defense 3, offense 5. But with the 6, it does mean he's turned it. See, again, Ab McDonald's going to be able to take the puck away from... You can't tell me that Tommy Williams beats Ab McDonald. I know I'm talking about guys from 60 years ago. You can't tell me that Williams gets by McDonald every single time. I'm not having it. I'm just not. So anyway, we're 8... Sorry. So we're 18, 20, thereabouts into it. And uh, right, right, right. No, we're 1740 thereabouts into it. Oh, what am I doing? Not yet. So McDonald here to get us to the end of the shift at least. I might just leave them out there for the final two. We've got pretty much our best guys. Uh, so McDonald here with the three and a five. I look to Murray Oliver here, the offensive five, the defense. There's no reverse here. So McDonald will get it too. Centerman Stan Makita here for his fourth a shot of the frame. Makita who leads the league in shots there. He's rolled a four and a four. Um, good, but not quite good enough, I don't think. I might have to start doing tallies with these instead of the uh, dots. But there will be no rebound on it. The rebound rating of three, so it is going to go back to four. It is the left defenseman here, Leo Boyven, with the puck. And uh, again, I'm going to assume, I'm going to leave them on, but I will mark time. This is the final two minutes of the first period. And let's see here, Boyvin to get us to 18-20, Boyvin 3-4. Look to Stan Makita, the 3 and the 3 and the 3. So just a pass for Boyvin to the wing on the same side. Up to Johnny Busick it goes. And here at 18-40, Busick with the 1 and the 2. I looked at McDonald with the 3. Busick here has the higher. And uh, that's 2 high. Yes, it's 3 higher. So Busick will get it to the man opposite the defensive player. Back to Ted Green from the point here with a shot on goal. Green with a 2. Could that score for him? He needs a 3. Look at that if i'm not mistaken that's a goal ted green all boston here in period one ted green has scored on a frustrated glenn hall from the point uh somebody pull that goalie not for another 62 games so ted green here with the freaking goal and that was williams busick back to green so green from busick that's how i'm gonna do it uh, at 1840, I had announced just prior. Let's roll it up to the exact time. Yes, at 1840. Why did I even bother? So at 1840, it's going to be green from Busick. And uh, green from Busick. And uh, let's, yeah, we'll drop and compare. Drop and compare. The assist rating is... Uh, it's either the offense or the passing. I think it's the offense. Pretty sure, because it's offense and defense. Offense would be the most logical. Right? And this is goals. And this is general offense. I like that about the game, how it generalizes it. In fact, in previous incarnations of games that I've made, I've had paradise modes. Like, you could just boil everything down and just play it as it's as paradise is played. Anyway, um, so Ted Green from Johnny Busick in the three and the two. I guess that means I look to Oliver and Williams, right? So that means Oliver gets the helper. He's got his second. And Busick, for that matter, I think, has got two, right? Busick Oliver, Williams moans, Williams, I didn't credit him, Williams moans, and uh, Busick, All right, and Oliver has two, so Busick and Oliver, whoops, okay, so we got about a minute 20 to go, which that works there, right, the 80 second segments have gone by, have transpired, and uh, we're going to get a face off. Okay, 6-3, that does mean home. Three, though, Chicago really must be ticked now. They're probably going to start taking penalties. Stan Makita with it. And Makita here up to, uh, yep, so two and a one. So I looked at Williams. Makita's much better. Makita gets it to left wing. Ab McDonald here. McDonald's first shot on goal of the night. McDonald's first shot on goal is a seven. Uh, so it's frozen and because the white six and we get a face off. Going to try to speed this up here a little. It's already an hour, or almost an hour. So here, one, four, that's visitor, four left defenseman, Leo Boyvin. Boyvin here, next dice action. And uh, that is uh, looking to the center. Uh, defense, Makita, three, Boyvin, three, and the two. Boyvin will just elect to pass it to up to Johnny Busick. 
Busick here. One five, so looking to McDonald here. Busick is better than McDonald. Busick will get it to the center. So Murray Oliver here with his fourth shot of the night. Oliver gets a four on that shot. Oliver would need a five to score, so just barely missed missed out on it. There is a rebound, however, and the rebound does come back to Busick. It's convenient. The puck is already there. I think this is the final 20 seconds of the period. We'll still play it out. Busick with a one and a one. Busick keeps picking on Ab McDonald, and <laughs> he's going to be able to get, get it by him. Um, to the other wing for a sh oh wait sorry scratch that the reverse so Ab McDonald gets it so I'm gonna say a takeaway a turnover and that's it for one that's it for one period so it is three nothing Boston here in my replay of this game which in real life Boston did win they won this by a final score of two one I have Oliver with four Busick I'm gonna call that a smudgy two I think he just had the two. Two, so four, six, eight, nine. Kurtenbach have one, 10, 11. So I have 12 shots on goal here for the Boston Bruins after 20. And uh, I have four for Makita and then four for the whole rest of the team. I have eight for Chicago. So I don't know about you. I think that worked out pretty nicely here, one period into it. Uh, as much as I want to keep going on camera, I think I'll give my voice a rest with this being about an hour even. So there you have it. I have replayed a period here. I'll let you know the final score at some point, maybe in some other video of this game. But I'm going to keep going with this off camera. Boston and Chicago, I'm going to revisit this project for the first time again since November of 2019. Cheers, thanks, and bye for now.